need to know about locality. I think a lot of people focus on martial arts magazines or sports sections in papers or national papers, and I don't think for us to get students, I don't think that's where it's at. I think we need to be looking for sponsorship, and I think we need to be looking to use local papers and local media very effectively, because that's where the market is. So if you get in, say, to the local paper in the front section, then obviously by the TV pages and things like that, say with the Power Ranger or with things, I think a lot more people see it. And I think the problem with a lot of media is when you get into the sports section or when you get into a magazine, martial arts included, people already do a sport or the martial arts. And the thing is, they tend to criticise. They tend to look in and go, oh, yeah, look at that, a lot of old crap. Mm -hmm. He's in it again. You know, I've heard all these things before. And I don't think that's what we're trying to achieve. But if you get into a feature section of a paper around a TV or horoscope over community features, I think that's so important. And I think that is, people tend to read it that don't do martial arts. And of course, the people who don't do martial arts, <laughs> what are we laughing about? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Head of point, <laughs> shut up, you wankers. <laughs> Bring it over. <laughs> Where's that teddy bear gone? Right, that's it. You've had enough. Had enough? You're too clean. No problem. Kick it out. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Action. Paul no, take one. Right. That was Paul no as in Paul no. <laughs> right. I didn't Sorry. say that because Emma's sitting there. No. Barry says she's gone red now, look. Sorry, can you have a break? <laughs> Now's the time for a commercial break. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so piss off, Matt Cup <laughs> Tea! Bunch of wankers. <laughs> no, Rob. Uh, uh, I'll that out. Any day, yeah. You probably won't, won't, but you can. <laughs> you probably won't. Though. Some media coverage can be detrimental to a club, though. Um, I know a chap that was struggling for numbers, and so he got the local paper in and he said, uh, you know, if I don't get numbers in, then the club's going to have to close. And that was actually put in the paper. And of course, everybody must have thought, yeah, well, yeah. well, what's the point of going to somewhere that's going to close anyway? Well, not so that, they didn't come. Yeah, actually portrays the impression, it's not that good. Good, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a lot of people run into that problem, because they don't know how to use the media well, properly. I think when you go into a club and someone's going, I really tell people to get there, and they give it the attitude bit, I think that really drives people away. Today's yeah. culture isn't about that. I think you know, people need to look at you know, what people want to do, they want to, they, they want to train, but they don't want to, I mean, oh, I remember going to a club, and I got there for self-defence, and in the process, I had to get beaten up, basically. Yeah, right, okay, what are you going to do? Put the gloves on, poof! Generally for the I don't want to go back. Yeah. Mm. You know, <laughs> I didn't go there to get a beating, I went there to train. You know, I mean, there's, there's loads of people with different aspects. You have to train hard, but you have to introduce the training, I think, gently. And over a set time, if you do it too fast, I mean, there's uh, numbers in martial arts, 85% fallout and 5% dropout rate That's over the course big, of like a year. Yeah. Because it's repetitive. You go in there, you learn the basics, and each week you're doing the same thing. You have to make that interesting. If you don't make it interesting, they leave. And I think that kids particularly, if they see anything as work, forget that, they ain't doing that. If it's like school, like work, forget it. I'm it's off. the great technique of disguised repetition. Yep. Of hiding doing that pattern another 20 more times in their lesson without them realising. I think there's a lot of you know, merit to that and I think that uh, people who have actually done coaching, because coaching, um, how you communicate, how you come across, that's responsible for your retention rate, your student retention. And I think you've got two aspects, I mean, you could be the best instructor in the world, you could have the best product in the world, but if you don't sell any, nobody knows about it. So the first thing you've got to do with, you know, with your club is to look at students. You need to look at where they're coming from, how to get them. And I think you also need to look at not necessarily what people need. You need to make them want to train with you. In any given area, there's usually more than one club. So why are they going to pick you over the others? And that's because you're raising awareness in local media. You know, if people don't know about you, they ain't going to train. And I think that's where Blackburn International and uh, the BNMA really are strong over other groups because they tend to want to remind you once a year pay your money, thanks very much, you don't hear from them again until there's an event or a competition, or pay again for your next year's subscription. What do you get for that money? 
I also think the problem is uh, partially we live in a fast food culture where people want things quickly, instantly. And with martial arts, as we all know, it's a gradual process of learning and building the foundation. But we do live in a fast food culture where people want to become Bruce Lee within six months. I, I get the same with most of my clients who come to, to train in the gym who, and who, who want to lose weight. They're looking for the instant potion or pill or secret formula that's going to transform them overnight. You know, to get a six pack before they get to the beach or to learn martial art quickly without doing any work. And that's why I think largely that's why where the dropout is so high in martial arts because they want to learn things instantly. And if you don't give it to them, that's it, they're gone. And I think that's why, for that reason, because people are a lot busier as well, the trend has gone from uh, sports like martial arts to recreational activities like spinning classes and body combat. You know, you get this, this uh, guy who goes to a weekend course, learns body combat, oh, I can teach martial arts moves. What, by attending a weekend course in body combat? Which is being licensed by some uh, uh, Les uh, Mills. Les BM. Les oh. Mills. Oh, no, let's, let's and and uh, people think I'm learning martial arts. They're learning just uh, aerobics to, to martial arts, which which is nothing to do with martial arts. But people would rather do that. Yeah. And those classes are full. I'm knowing fitness first, uh, where, where, I'm, where I'm teaching. It's it's always, always, always full. It's unbelievable. How many times have you seen someone who's been into a class and the instructor said something like, one day you're going to be as good as me, and I think now it's a time to leave. <laughs> because if I'm only as good as him, I want him to make me better than him. I don't want to know how good he's going to be in five years' time, I want to know how good I'm going to be. You know? And I think a lot of people get off on the fact that they stand in front of a big group and they tell you how it is. And it's all about control. I mean, how many instructors, when you go in, it's one room, one man, students and after six weeks everybody thinks this is his holiday fund you know we do so much with the brochures and sometimes I'll phone round the membership and they say oh yeah um, blah 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 and I'll say do you know about the science stuff they go no no you didn't send me anything about that and I think to myself yes I did because you just told me what else was in the newsletter so they don't read it so the point is if you give people choice it empowers the people because then they're in control but what instructors tend to do is they don't want to work with other instructors, not because they're idiots, because they're a little bit apprehensive, a little bit nervous, and there's so much to gain from networking. If you take your students out of the classroom environment on the field trips, they get to see you're part of something much bigger, and it's actually inspiring. I think um, the, the, today's attitude with martial arts is, is evolving, is changing an awful lot from when I started in martial arts, um, it was very insular there. If you were learning judo, you did judo. You didn't go anywhere else. If you were learning you this, did judo, everything else was crap. Yeah. Well, yeah. you did karate, everything yeah. else was crap. That sort of idea, whereas now everyone's starting to realise there are aspects of lots of different things. If you can incorporate all those bits into, just call it a martial art rather than giving it a, a, a taekwondo or a judo or, or a, a, a label such as that, that you can get a lot more and students get a lot more out of their training. Um, with with our club, we we have links now with um, a couple of kickboxing clubs um, locally that come in and do training um, for our sparring with us. Um, we also then have a link with an Aikido club um, who come in and do training with us for um, throws and joint manipulation and things like that. And we then in return go and, and teach um, maybe a kicking class for them. 